Hi all and welcome to my Jurassic Jungle Garden journey. I'm Steve, I hope you are good. Uh, just going to do a quick run round because I've done a few bits and obviously a few musings now we're sort of on a roll with these things so we keep going. Um, it's perfect timing actually because you're just starting to get the gist from this angle. If you can see those two banana leaves that have sort of come in across the middle toward each other. Um, that's the effect I wanted to do. I'm hoping that the final picture will be, if you imagine the next leaf up from that that's going to come out that way, is almost going to be as high as the windows on that house. And they'll sort of make it a sort of M where they touch in the middle over the centre, hopefully. Um, and it will make it a bit of a kind of, you know, you'll get a glimmer and you have to sort of crawl under the trees to get in there type thing. But anyway... Um, that's that so it's all starting to come along was the gist of that um, so first thing I've been doing is just uh, this where these potted pigs and sheep are uh, I was saying I was going to knock this down if the bamboo didn't survive and make it into an angled one um, but it's surviving so that's all good but if we come over here uh, if you can see that back patio area, I apologise for the wind, is kind of an octagon shape. So where the two bar stools are is kind of flat towards us. Then you've got a 45, then a sort of straight going the other way. 45, straight when we get to this bit here. Uh, 45, straight where the bench is going to be. And then, so this needs to have a 45 in it. So I'm just going to build that up as a planter and probably put one of the camellias in there. But we'll get to that when we get to that. Um, so first thing I did over the weekend was I amended this flower bed here. I did say I was going to take it out, but I did quite like it. Um, and all it was was that, because if you imagine the original octagon is to where that bamboo post is, the little tiny one just in the centre of the screen. So that was actually as far along as I should have come for it to all marry up. Um, but I overhung it by, well, I was up past the edge of the right-hand side of the fence post. So, yeah, I took all that out, put it back in, which meant I could raise up um, a lot of this. And behind that bench, you probably didn't see it before, but I filled in all that. Uh, you can see I've got a few of my fossil rocks around. There's one of them, I've got a couple of others as well. There's one there, that blue bit's got the end, but that little sort of stone, the nearest one that's in the bed, has got kind of ribs in it, so it looks all good. Um, so yeah, we've got some new plants, which we'll get to in a sec. Um, just have a quick look in here. So the Bletchenum chilinesse is doing all right. He's quite a sort of hard, um, a hard firm which I think goes well with these two the more I've looked at it because the Asplenium's obviously you know looks quite unique in itself but then the Polypodium vulgar over there is quite sort of a leathery texture like the Bletchenum chilinesse it's not like a soft feathery texture which we'll get to shortly um, so I don't know if you can see as well the spider that is hanging just on the end of my finger, just there, probably not. But anyway, I, as soon as I put that Spleenium in, about within the hour he was building that nest, and I sat there and watched him for a bit, so that was fun. Um, yeah, so what was I getting at? So yeah, I think these ferns could work quite well together. So I'm going to leave them in there and just muse on them for a bit. This uh, Ethereum Neponicum at the back, the silver fern, he started off quite well in there and now not. I think that might be where it's lost the humidity, um, where I've chopped stuff out. So we'll see how he does. But anyway, I got word the other day that I've got a reliable source for a giant Burmese honeysuckle. Um, so that is where that is going to go. And then I'll chop the sunflower out and then that gives it plenty of nutrients in there. And it's full sun pretty much, but more than full sun. And then what I'm going to do is get a pergola across here, sort of matching the the, head, the top of it. will be matching the grass a little bit that I've put in there, uh, like in an octagon shape. And then that will go across to a fence post over there by the seating and a little roof over in that corner. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to train it up there and as far along all the pergola and that as I possibly can. The ginger's not flowered yet. Unfortunately, with my 
robustness. I snapped uh, this, well I didn't snap it but I bent it so I don't know what he's going to do but this one looks like he's going to flower. I'm looking quite forward to it. Um, sorry. So yeah that's looking quite nice. It's also sent up because it lent because I think it was under the initial banana leaves um, but it's thrown up some new ones at the back and they're straight so we shall keep a close interest on that. The canna is coming out quite nice. Hopefully you're getting a good picture of that. So that looks like he's got plenty to come. So I'm happy with that. It's throwing up new leaves, just threw up two new leaves as well. So it's obviously still going. Uh, oh yeah, I should say as well. Also, I went round with two bags of manure and some chicken pellets and uh, chicken manure pellets. Um, and what else is a bit of ericaceous compost here and there. Just mixed it all up and just dug it all in where I could get it. You can probably see the little blotches of light brown on the soil yeah that's the pellets where i watered them in so everything's had a good sort of long-term feed as it were uh, so the first phone that i've got is this one here which is an absolute beauty um it's it just caught my eye in the shop i, I didn't have it on my list i've got a big list of flap ones i wanted to get i didn't it just caught my eye and I just sort of thought well I better get it because you never know it might not be here next time but you can see it's almost like the Lophosauria the way it comes up on a stalk and leans over it might just be a miniature version but this is called the hare's foot fern um, because if you have a look on the left there you can see the two new fronds coming up but on the right hand side that's actually the rhizome creep in and you can see it half resembles a rabbit's foot uh yeah you know like a hare's foot so that's why it's called that um i've put it in this pot for now i did think about putting it around a few places i was going to um my first plan was to pop him over there with the tree ferns uh, just in that sort of the three at the back there that are sort of in line with us the um fat cedera royal fern and the cyathea, the small cyathea. I'm going to put it to the left of there in between the cyathea and the thing but then I thought it's brand new you can see how windy it is we predicted a bit of wind it's a windy garden anyway so I basically thought um, I won't put it there and then I went to put it up here somewhere just because there was a bit of space but what I noticed was when I was just putting it around is that you lose the sort of nice feathery effect that you look you see that's got no green background and it sticks out and it's really nice um, so you, you lose that when it's in and around for, uh, for uh, other ferns and stuff so I, wanna, I wanted to keep it like it is I did think about chucking it in here actually because I thought this wall now is you can see there's sort of the plants are up below it was like about 20 centimeters 25 centimeters so i thought it would look quite good in there somewhere but i just thought i was going to put it where the silver fern is at the back um i'm sorry i just heard something um yeah i was going to put it where that uh, silver fern is at the back but then i thought the giant honeysuckle was going there so i don't want to put it there so i just pulled it up for now and i think what i'm going to do because it has like that creeping rhyme zone I've been looking for something to go in this. This is going to be a plant, obviously a seat, um, and this is going to be a plant. Now my my head, if you imagine there was a block on top of that back one, so sort of half of one up from this front bit and then up again, that would be where my head is and someone's, I'm not massive, but it would cover most people, I think, that height. So I'll probably raise that up one more level from what it is, <coughs> and then I might chuck that in there and I think that would look quite good because if it gets quite big and it grows uh, lengthways you know rather than a clump if it sort of stretches out because it can't go anywhere else it might sort of unfurl over the one's head if you see what I mean so uh, yeah that's that so we're keeping on that one Lot of soil I've still been meaning to trim him um, but what I did notice, you can see it in the wind then, did you did you see that flash then? It's, that it's got a lovely underside to it, a kind of almost like a metallic blue. Just trying to get, get the best light on it, but hopefully you can see that glimmer on that one. But yeah, you can see this is throwing up new throngs here and there, so I'm going to give this a good trim and chop off these bent ones for a start and any that are sort of crossing too much that they're going to block the new ones 
this Nicotiana is doing well as always but I'm thinking of digging him out I mean he's still going strong look at all these flowers that are still coming this has probably been a month and a half that it's been flowering for and there's still quite a lot to come up from the stem at that so but the only thing I'm thinking is that nicotine is poisonous isn't it I think so I don't know if it's raining and it's poisoning the ground a bit but um, so yeah I'll have to do some research on that so I might take him out shortly uh, the tetrapanax down there is not enjoying life at all I thought it might like it there but the other thing with this nicotiana is that it's so tall we are effectively the sun so the t-rex the t-rex plants gets it for a bit gets it for a bit and then it goes like that if you see what i mean like this the sun it just sort of misses it and it's only going to get worse as the sun's starting to go back down so yeah i may cut this out rather promptly because i want to give that a good month a month or two at least for it to all get in there but i've had thoughts about this bed anyway because i was thinking about evergreen stuff you know to make it look good in winter i think i might put a sheffler tree in there or something but we'll get to that because the next plant i've got is my other new one which is the woodwardia radicans um you can see that leaf's obviously quite nice again it's another like one of these ones which is why well, it's quite nice up here but it's a chain fern so when the ends of the fronds touch the floor um, they um, <clears throat> create a bulbous or something and then that's a new fern will then grow on from that basically um, so yeah we'll keep an eye on that one but like I said this Nicotiana take a good look at it because it might not be there next time but it's done quite well it's just, uh, just not my thing really so these all ferns are all looking a bit not great i don't know what that is um, i don't think it's where they're deciduous i think some something's funny is going on there anyway it may be maybe it's when i move that nicotine plant over they all start doing that that one was already doing it over in the center bed these are the two shuttlecock ferns royal ferns doing all right spleniums this is the camellia i might move i might put another fatsia or that fatsia over there to grow up here for the evergreen still thinking about that this erythrosa drop to its erythrosa is looking good you can just see the colors it's throwing up now it should have done this earlier in the year but um apparently they turn red in spring so yeah i don't know what it's doing maybe they're just uh, doing it this jurassic gold these are two jurassic golds yeah, i think they're dry up to it something or other um you can just see the sort of tinge that's getting to it so we keep an eye on that one see how they go these are all doing quite well. Uh, I haven't had a look at this silver fern for a while. That's still going strong. Nothing new coming up though from it. So we'll see how it does. The Dixonia is getting quite exciting actually. Can you see it's just, it's obviously threw up its fronds for this year because I had a couple unfurl on me and there was already two or three on it. But I always thought they just did one round a year. But I don't know if you can see that. Um, is coming up right in the center there and it's an absolute monster so i'm quite happy with that and it looks like there's a couple more in the top of the crown as well not that you'll be able to see it but yeah so i'm quite excited about that that's going to throw up a new front the only thing i fear for it is that it's going to be into the wind <laughs> so <laughs> it could end all messy but we'll keep an eye on that um the other dick's only the small really like you know just a plant one not a tree fern um it's doing really well actually it's kind of got a spiral effect they're all layered at different things it's got curves on the leaves i'm quite looking that like it's absolutely fire in this one there's the new front there uh, this one coming towards us slightly it's got one halfway up that and then it's got one halfway up that one so it's throwing them out certainly Safia's so thrown up a new front which means i might be able to get rid of one of the older ones uh, i moved the asplenium the maiden hair fern and the arachnoid one over they look dead but we'll just chuck them in there and see what happens you never know and the fat cedar and the royal fern are just ticking along nicely so yeah be interesting to see what that tree fern um from does how big that is and if any more come obviously i might move that camellia shortly the nicotiana will probably be gone uh, just because i've just got a hunch about it not being great for other plants but it looked great in a pot um that would be my recommendation is to do it into a pot 
Um, the foliage is quite nice. It's a bit more cabbagey than jungly, if you sort of catch my drift on that. Um, but yeah, this other one, I've got a few blocks somewhere underneath the barbecue, so I may build up this planter by the next time. I'll render it and paint it, obviously, in the end, but I may put that in and then put that um, has, I think it is an Ariostega Privy Pinata, I think. Um, Ara, Ariostega, yeah, you know, what it's like with these names, but he's really nice. He's going to look good, I think. I've got a great spot for him, so yeah, I might build up that. I'll probably take the sunflower out now as well because it's um, pretty much done. The other one's bent over, this one's just about bent over, and I fancy this banana leaf might finish on top of it. So yeah, it's all coming along, it's all coming along. Well, anyway, hope you all, you don't want to see all that, <laughs> but yeah, hope you're all enjoying your evening. Uh, I'm going to go and Potter. Right, see you in a bit.